It's finally here, the Sony 85mm f1.4 G Master Mark II. This isn't it. I already had to send it back. This is the 24 G Master, but this is it. Okay, so I've had the pleasure of using this lens for about a month. I've used it on three sessions and a short wedding. Um, and so for this video, I want to quickly dive through some of the specs and what's new with this lens, as well as walk through um, some of my favorite images from these three sessions and the wedding, just to kind of give you an idea of how I use the lens, as well as show you some example images. So before we dive into these example images and some behind the scenes content, I wanna quickly explain what it is about this lens that is new. So as a whole, you won't really notice too much on the outside that's new. It's a little bit smaller, it's a little bit lighter, um, but if you put them side by side, you're gonna be hard pressed to really tell the difference. You still have the aperture ring, you have a de-clicking switch, you have two custom buttons that you can program to whatever you would like within the camera. But the main things that you'll see that are new with this lens are going to be internal because the original 85 millimeter G Master Mark I was released when Sony first went mirrorless. And so that lens is coming up on, I think maybe six or seven years old. So there's a lot of new technology that Sony has developed within those years. And all of that technology is now going to be put into this lens. So in the past, I never actually used the original G Master Mark I simply because the autofocus speed wasn't really up to par in comparison to some of their newer lenses. Um, and that's all changed with this lens. The autofocus is snappy, it is fast, it locks on instantaneously. Now, one of the first places that I put this lens to the test is just around the house doing some family documentary work. Now, I feel that if a lens or a camera can keep up with photographing my kids, then it is gonna have no problem doing anything like sports, um, photographing weddings, portraits, things like that. Now, traditionally, an 85 f1.4 lens is going to be used for photographing portraits and things like that, but the autofocus speed on this is extremely fast, so much so that I had my kids just simply run at the camera full speed, and with the lens paired to my a7cr, I didn't miss a single image, and that's with locking focus on one person, switching to another person, and then switching to another person. Um, all while they're running at the camera. And so if the lens and a not so high end sports style camera can keep up with this, then I feel that this lens paired with something like an A9 Mark III or an A1 should have no problem photographing any type of sports or wildlife or anything like that if that's what you wanna use this lens for. Now, moving on from here, the next thing that I did is I used this lens on three high school senior portrait sessions and then a wedding. And so what I wanna do is just quickly walk through some of my favorite images from these three sessions as well as, as the wedding. Um, and I'll explain kind of why I use the lens or at least just give you an example of what this lens can do. So jumping right in, let's just kind of start walking through some behind the scenes and example images. Now this first setup, um, I have the high school senior set up to be lit by natural light and I climbed up on top of this little table because I wanted to use this light bulb paired with a little crystal that I had inside of my camera bag because this light bulb is actually refracting all throughout this crystal, giving me some really cool foreground elements while the senior is being lit by the natural light. Next, I put the student's mom to work. Um, I wanted to really uh, showcase the use of this 85 millimeter lens for compression and separation. And so I framed the senior up against this concrete wall and I wanted to show um, kind of this separation between concrete and nature, but the swing was actually in the way. And so I just had the mom pull that swing out, out of the way so that I could showcase this and just kind of separate um, the senior from the greenery on the other side. Moving along, I found this cool little nook, and so I set up an off-camera flash to light the senior, and I added a full CTO gel because I really wanted to push the outside color temperature to something really cool uh, while using this doorway to frame the senior. This is what we ended up getting. 
Um, once I color corrected the warm tones for some nice skin tones, everything else went a nice cool blue. Now to close out this session, I decided to set up a hand painted backdrops from Hand Painted Backdrops UK. I'll go ahead and leave a link to that in the description if you're curious. Um, but I set up the senior in between the backdrop and these this like tall grass. Uh, and then I lit her with a Profoto B10X and the three foot Octobox. And so here's what the final image of that looks like. Now, moving along to the next session, um, I wanted to showcase this senior up against this uh, brick wall posing on this, uh, this stairwell. Uh, and what I found out is that actually this lens for being so new and having all of those fancy coatings and stuff like that, it does actually have some pretty cool characters when it comes to flare. Um, now, obviously, if you put the lens hood on, you won't get any sort of flare or anything like that, but I like to have the lens hood off so I can kind of play around with that. Um, and if you put the sun in just the right spot, you get this really cool rainbow type of flare, which I really actually enjoy, um, especially because putting on the lens hood, if you can get rid of it very easily if that's something that you don't want. And then next up, we went ahead and went into this little nook. And again, I used the Profoto B10X with a three foot Octobox to light, the, to light up the senior. And I really just liked um, you know, her green dress paired with the blue wall, paired with the warm tones of this kind of line that was painted on the door. Um, and so here is what the final result looks like. Uh, and then this is what it actually looks like without any sort of off-camera flash if I were to just use the available light. Moving on, um, I really liked these little bits of dappled light coming through the trees. And so I wanted to really draw those out. And so I got my PMI Gear Smoke Genie um, and I just laid down a whole bunch of fog kind of all throughout the area and let it catch all of those little bits of light as they came through the uh, through the leaves here. Last up, I wanted to give kind of like a sunset type of feel because it was kind of a cloudy day. Um, I went ahead and set her up in this little um, pavilion type area and I set up the B10X off to the side with a full CTO gel. So this is what the image looks like with just natural light and this is what it looks like with the B10X and the full CTO gel kind of putting that light up in the corner to kind of mimic uh, like if there was like a sunset up there. Now, the majority of this next session was actually out on the lake. And so a lot of it I shot wide open because, you know, we're out on the boat. I was swimming around in the, um, in the lake uh, and things like that. And so I really wanted to showcase all of the environment. So I shot a lot of this at 24 millimeters, a couple images at 35 millimeters. Um, but before we went out, I did take one portrait um, at the lake house that they have. And what I noticed is that um, there was this cool reflection off of one of the windows, uh, but it's using double pane glass. And so what happens is that each pane gives me a different reflection. So I set this high school senior up in the sunlight and I used the double pane glass to kind of give me this cool double reflection, uh, which I thought was pretty interesting. And then after the session, I decided I wanted to use this lens. I couldn't get too good a BTS video because as you can tell, it's actually really, really dark. But this is what the natural light looks like. I needed the 85 millimeter here because if I got any closer, you could actually see um, the shoreline. And so I needed to get far enough back so that the entire window in between these trees was filled with lake water. Um, and so that's where the 85 millimeter came in, um, came in handy here. And so this is what the natural light looks like. And then this is what it looks like when I add the off camera flash. But because I'm shooting in such low light conditions, instead of raising up my ISO, what I did is I actually shot at a really low shutter speed. One, because I can use the off camera flash to kind of freeze my subject. And then two, because of the in-body image stabilization, if I keep my camera really still, I can still get a really sharp image. What this does is allows me to play around with some shutter drag. Um, and so this is what the image looks like once I add off-camera flash. Um, and then once I start playing around with some shutter drag techniques, these are some examples that I can get. Um, in these first two, what I'm doing is I'm just taking the camera and really quickly jerking it left or right. But what I noticed is that I enjoyed those kind of streaks that were coming through from the trees. And so what I decided to do is kind of instead of going side to side, I went at like a diagonal. Um, and what this left me with is sort of a kind of like rays of sunlight coming through the trees, which I really thought was kind of cool. Now, next up, I have another senior session. So for this particular setup, I really enjoyed the texture of this wall, um, but I didn't want it to be too in focus. And so what I did is I set the senior up a little bit away from the wall so that I could really blur out the texture of this wall. Um, and then with a full CTO gel, I was able to 
light hem with a nice warm tone. And then once I color corrected that, the wall went to this really cool dark blue. And then removing the CTO gel and doing a quick little lighting adjustment, I was able to get a little bit tighter of a headshot for him, just kind of looking at the camera and being a little bit more camera aware. Moving on after a little bit of an outfit change, I really enjoyed this kind of like dark suit with the button up shirt that he had going on. And I wanted to kind of pair this kind of like masculine quality with some of these flowers that I had found while he was changing. And so I kind of stuck him inside of this little flower bush. Um, but because of the angle that I'm shooting at, there ended up being a little bit of distractions up in the top right corner of the frame as far as like power lines and poles and stuff like that. So rather than be stuck to a composition where I'm shooting a little bit more squared onto the, um, onto the flowers because I really wanted to play with that depth of field, um, I got a little convex lens that I had in my bag and I used that to kind of not only um, blur away some of those distractions, but it caught the sun and gave me this really nice lens flare coming through the frame. Um, and so I just used that to kind of fill in the frame instead of there being distractions. Now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at some of the wedding images. And so while we were doing some bride prep stuff, the makeup artist had mentioned that she was getting ready to spray kind of a makeup setting type of spray onto her. And so anytime I think about spray or anything going up into the air, I think about backlighting it. So real quickly, I ran over, set my uh, Profoto B10X, behind the bride so that it's firing directly at her face. And then I moved over to the other side and just waited for her to spray that on her face to get something kind of interesting with this backlit spray while she's getting her makeup set. Okay, so next up with some groom prep, I really wanted to play around with getting his suit set up. And so instead of using off-camera flash, I actually just turned on the modeling light for the B10X. And then using the 85 millimeter lens, I wanted some compression to get some of that depth of field, but I couldn't get far enough away because the room was quite narrow. And so instead I set up directly next to him and then I used a mirror to kind of reflect him up against the scene. Uh, and then there was just kind of like a distraction off here to the side as far as the couch and blanket and stuff like that goes. And so I used a mirror to kind of fill in that distraction. And then I used that mirror to reflect some of the lights. And so it gave me kind of a really cool lens flare while also getting rid of some of the distractions that were um, on the other side of this mirror. Next up for some portraits on this wedding, um, I posed them along this shadow line where uh, the fence was kind of blocking some of the sun. And so the fence is in shade, but there in sunlight. Uh, and so I pose him in a way that the light is actually bouncing off of his face and then reflecting into her face. What this does is gives him kind of this nice masculine rim light while re that reflected light on her face actually gives her this like nice soft glowing light. So once I got them all posed up, I realized that um, there was a little bit of distractions as far as this tree goes. And so uh, rather than play around with Photoshop and doing all kinds of crazy reflections and stuff like that, I just grabbed that plant, moved it out of the way, got back into position and got the final frame. Uh, rather than move them around and stuff like that, I just kept them where they were, move my position, get a couple more tighter frames of them just kind of posed up against the fence, interacting with each other. And then again, I really love this rainbow flare that you can get given the right sun position. Last up, I always love to get kind of like a really dark and dramatic type of image to kind of round out, you know, wedding albums and slideshows and things like that. But it was pretty much like maybe four or five in the afternoon. I can't remember exactly, but if you look outside, you can tell the sun is still pretty high. So I can't really do too much outside as far as getting something like really dark and dramatic. So I set them up inside I have a pro photo b10x behind them in between them and the wall and then I just laid down a real big blanket of fog with this PMI gear smoke genie and you can get a pretty good idea of what the natural light looks like as far as the BTS video but here is what a frame looks like with no off-camera flash and then here is what the final result was so hopefully you really enjoyed walking through some of these example images and how I use this lens. But in terms of image quality, uh, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper, um, I'm not really big on doing crazy lens tests and lens charts and all of that fun stuff, but I did run out and take a quick picture of the brick wall on the side of my house just to kind of give you an idea of things like distortion and vignetting and stuff like that. And so here's some examples of what that looks like as far as F1.4. Uh, with a really tight crop up against the top left um, of the frame. And then here's an example of what F4 looks like, again, with a really tight crop of that top left corner. And even at 1.4, the sharpness is more than acceptable. And obviously it gets a little bit sharper once you stop down to F4. And if you put the two side by side, you can tell the F4 is sharper, but 
If you look at the F1.4 image, this is a pretty tight crop way up in a corner. So for me, this is more than acceptable for anything that I would ever use this lens for. Lastly, when it comes to things like chromatic aberration, I went out, took a picture of a tree, um, you know, really shadowy, contrasty area up against a really bright sky. And with a really tight crop on the edge of the frame, you can see that there really isn't any sort of like chromatic aberrations. Again, this is no corrections no profiles because this lens is pre-production so this is it doesn't even have like a general profile correction or anything like that this is just straight out of camera raw file which is my preset applied to it for you know things like contrast and color but no sort of like chromatic aberration correction or anything like that hopefully you guys find this lens as cool as i do it's probably going to be one that i add to my bag um, it is it really is just a fantastic lens the sharpness is amazing the speed is amazing um, i do enjoy that it is a bit smaller and lighter than the previous version um, and if you guys find this useful, as always, give some likes, comments, subscribes. If you found some of the images cool and you want to find out more about that, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon where I'll walk through some more about these photo sessions as well as um, some of my favorite images that weren't necessarily shot on the 85. And I also do a bunch of before and afters as well as edit walkthroughs and things like that. So with that, catch you on the next one, guys.